Recently, I was working on a client's project and I came across an interesting Power Query data cleansing problem. Now, I'm not really sure that how much of the exact problem you're going to find it in your own scenarios, but hey, you're going to find interesting parts and bits and pieces of the problem highly applicable to your own data sets in somewhat or the other. Well, this is going to be a crazy M solution. And more importantly, I would like to talk about that. How do you think through a problem and carve out a solution using, of course, the M language? No further ado. Let's go. All right, fellas in Excel here, let's just spend a minute or two to first understand the problem and then we will tackle the solution. So I've got two tables here. The first one is this days table. And if you take a look at the days table, there are letters concatenated with a delimiter between, which is nothing but a comma. Every single letter that you see has a reference to a day of the week. And where do you find the reference? We have another table, which is where the first column is the letter and the second column is what day does it stand for? So for instance, R, M and S stands for, R stands for Thursday, M stands for Monday and S stands for Saturday. And that's how you would read the two tables. Now, what I want as an output is a table like this. So which is where I have the first column retained from the first table right here. That is the first column. And the names of the days have been transformed into nothing but the columns. So these are Monday through Sunday and everything that happened in that particular day. So for example, we have a Tuesday here. The Tuesday is marked as a true. We have RMS, which is Monday. That is right here. R is Thursday. That is right here. And S is Saturday. And that is right here. So we need to create this kind of structure or this kind of output uh, using the two tables that we have, the first table and the second table. We'll take a look at how do we go about building the solution. Like I said at the start of the video, I would want you to understand the logic and carry out the logic in such a way that you can apply it to any of the problems that you're currently facing, should the logic is helpful in constructing any of your own solutions. Now, how are we going to actually solve the problem? So let's just take a look. If you take a look at the days column right here, the very first problem that we would want to solve is that we would want to parse the days or split the days by the delimiter, which is nothing but a comma. And then we need to do some sort of lookup. So first is parsing the days, obviously. So we need to split R, M and S individually as three different letters. And then for every individual letter, R, M and S, I need to do some sort of lookup. So R stands for what? Thursday. So that's my first lookup. M stands for what? Monday, that's my second lookup. And S stands for what? Saturday, and that's my third lookup. So I need to do some sort of lookup to be able to derive what letter or what day of the week does it stand for. The second thing is that once we have been able to get what day of the week is that, then we need to kind of somehow transform the day of the week as the column header. So R, M and S needs to be the header of the table and against that, I don't really want to have the day. I want to have true or false. That was something there on Monday or not. So if it's there on Monday, then please write a two. If it's not there on Monday, then hey, just leave it as blank. That's what I would want to write. So there are three parts to this. First is parsing, obviously these letters. The second one is doing a lookup. And third one is converting those values into column headers so that everything stays nice and dynamic. All right, it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Let's just go build out the solution one part at a time. All right, we are in Power Query, of course, and I've loaded the two tables, days and the week right here. Uh, and you can see that we have the days right here. And the first part of the problem that we have to solve for is that how do I split uh, every single letter into individual letters? And then the second part is obviously going to be the lookup. So let's just start with that. I'm going to go ahead in the Add Columns tab and make a custom column. And in the custom column, let the name be custom, doesn't matter. But here I'm going to write a function, first of all, to replace the uh, comma right here. And then I will split every single character. Now, the reason why I am replacing the comma with nothing is because I'm assuming that some of you may also have a problem where there is no delimiter in between. So R, M, S are just concatenated, like R, M and S, nothing in between. So how would you then split it if there is no delimiter in between? I'm giving you the possibility for that. So let's do this. So I'm going to first of all say, um, what is that function? Text dot replace. So replace. And I'm going to say that, hey, days happens to be the name of the column and replace uh, a comma with nothing. Close the bracket and press enter. What we get, of course, the same result, but the commas have been replaced with nothing. Now, I would like to split uh, R, M and S into three individual letters. So how do I do that? 
there happens to be a function um, I think it's called text dot to list or something text dot to list and I just provide the piece of text inside of that and commit to this press enter I'm gonna get a list and in the list every single letter in a word is going to come up in three different items of the list so R M and S have been split up in every single item of the list. That's nice. Next comes the lookup. So we have all of these lists right here. Every single item of the list, which is R, M and S needs to be looked up in this particular table, which is nothing but the week table in the letter column. So if I just go peek into that, we have two columns, letter and the day. So first of all, I need to find out that, hey, where are you in this list? Once I find out where are you in the list, that means the position number, then the corresponding item can be selected, which is nothing but Wednesday. All right, let's just see how can we do that. So I'm gonna go back to my days table right here and start to modify my custom function. So I'm gonna say something like, hey, I'm trying to transform this list and the transformation is nothing but the lookup. So list.transform, list.transform. And in the list.transform, I'm saying that here is my list and in every item of the list, what I would like to do is first of all, get the week and the letter. So I'll say, hey, get the week, which is the name of the table, uh, square bracket letter, which makes it as a list. And then I would like to find the position of. So let's just first write a list dot position of. So the first part in the list dot position of function is nothing but what list are you trying to work with? So I'm trying to work with in the week table and the letter list. So letter. And then I'm going to say that, hey, uh, this is going to be applied to every single row of my current list that I have. Take a look at the result. Let's just see what we get. I'm going to click on OK. It still gives me a list because we have just done a lookup. If you now see the output of our list, what we have been able to get is nothing but numbers. And these numbers correspond to the matched item or the position item of this week and the letter column. Let's just take a look. So R M S R happens to be for Thursday. So if I just go happen, take a look at the position of Thursday, that's zero position one, two and third position. And that is three. So if you take a look, we have in this list three, zero and five. And those were nothing but positions of Thursday, Monday and Saturday. Nice. Now, once we have gotten the position numbers, we don't need the position numbers. Hey, we, we need the name of the day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these position numbers to go inside of this list and grab the corresponding item. So I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to go back. Eventually that I'm trying to work with is nothing but the week. And that is going to be the name of the day that gives me the list from that list. This gives me the position number of the item in the list. I can just surround that in the curly braces. So that's the list. That is the position. I'm going to click on OK. I still get a list. But in this time, we have completed the lookup and we have Thursday, Monday and Saturday referencing the correct days of the week. All right. The final part of solving the problem is to convert every single item of the list into a column instead. So take a look uh, in the list. We have a Thursday, Monday and Saturday, and those are looked up values. But I don't really want the item to be a list. I want it to be a column. So I want a column for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And here I would want to have true or false. Now, the problem with the list is that the list contains just individual items items uh, in multiple rows, but I also want to have the column name. So I cannot be working with a list because list has individual items. I have to work with another object structure that has two items. It has the name of the column and the value of the column and the name of the column can obviously then be expanded. So I'm looking at to convert this particular list into a record and the record should have the column header as Thursday. That's one and the value can be true. But for now, we'll make it simple. We'll also write the value as Thursday, right? Just keeping things simple for now. So the name of the column is going to be Monday and the value also is going to be Monday. The name of the column is going to be Saturday and the value also is going to be Saturday. Let's just see how can we transform the list into a record. So I'm going to go ahead and start to modify my function right here. And in the function, let's just simplify things a bit so that we are able to read and understand the code. So I'm going to first of all declare a variable. So I'll say let and this part of the code is giving me nothing but the list of days. So I can just write something like list of days. And that is the first part right here. And in the second part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the list of days into a record so that I start to see two things the name of the column and the value of the column. So I'm going to say list to records, list to records. And then the value or the formula for that is records dot from list. 
I think that's a singular record dot from list and record dot from list function asks you hey give me a list as a list so curly braces and list of days gets copied and pasted right here that is nothing but the first part and then it asks you hey do you have any column headers sure enough the values itself are the column headers so i'm just again going to feed the same part inside of that close the bracket close the bracket and of course since we have written the let statement we also need to write the in statement after the in statement i am just going to return that part as an output let's just see what do we get i'm going to click on ok now it still is a list but inside of the list we don't have individual items anymore we have converted every single value of the list into nothing but a record let's just peek into the record and let's just see what we get so i'll click right here and i get the record if i peek into the record we have now been able to transform the single value thursday into a record which is where the column header is thursday and the value also is thursday Ideally, the value should be true, but hey, we have Thursday for now. So that's what we have. So uh, Monday and Monday, uh, Saturday and Saturday, so on and so forth. The next part of the problem obviously is not to write uh, Saturday. Uh, we need to write a true for that. So let's just maybe handle that real quick. I'm going to come right here and I'm going to say that, hey, this list that we are trying to work with, it needs to be transformed and we need to write true rather than the letter every single time. So I'm going to say something like list.transform and I am trying to write in every single row of this particular list as a true value. So T-R-U-E, close the bracket. I hope my brackets are in order. Let's just commit and see. We still get a list. And if I peek into that, we still have a record. If I go to the next step, we still have a record. But here, now we have transformed the list or the item into the very value true. And here also we have true. Here also we have true. Now. The next problem that we're trying to solve is that at the moment, since we had three different items, which was uh, like RMS, like Thursday, Monday and Saturday right here, we have gotten three records. But hey, we would just want to have one record. That means one column for Thursday, one column for Monday and one column for Saturday, of course, with one row of data. But we would want to have one record, not three records. So what are we going to do? We're just going to combine the records. If records are combined, they just become a single record. Simple as that. Nothing very complicated. So all this piece of code is giving me a list with records inside of that. I can just wrap this piece of code into something like, what is that? Record.combine, I believe. Record.combine. Uh, and I can just maybe close the bracket in the end, close, say OK. And what we get is nothing but a record. And we have Thursday, Monday and Saturday and all of these days with true in the end. Of course, what I'm going to do now is expand this record column right here. So click on expand, uncheck the name prefix. All the columns are right here. Click on OK, uh, insert a step. That's fine. And all of that gets expanded right here on the right. Now, there is just one tiny problem with our solution is that as soon as we expanded, the names of the columns that got expanded are hard coded and that is not what I want. I also want them to be sorted in the right order. I'm assuming that in this week's table, these days are going to be sorted in the right order. So rather than hard coding the names of the columns, which are right here in the step, uh, right here, I am going to feed the names of the columns from this table and the column that is going to support that is going to be the day column. So I'm going to say something like, hey, just delete every part of this formula. And I'm going to say that the names of the columns are going to come from the week table and nothing but the day column right here. Close the bracket and press enter. And the days also get sorted Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And we also get a Sunday right here, even though there are no trues in that particular column. And that's that's the solution. That's it. Let me know if you have any questions around this. More importantly, there could be many ways of solving this problem. But should you want to go the M way, my objective in this video was to help you think through how do you build pieces of code, tie it up together? How do you work with different object structures, manipulate them and arrange them in a way that it all comes out to be the solution that you would want. Now, of course, there have been parts in this problem that you could take away and build it into your own solutions to make it more dynamic. But in case you have any questions, 
questions, please do not hesitate to ask me that. There are also a couple of very ingenious solutions that people have posted on LinkedIn. I'm going to leave a link to that and you should definitely take a look at that. I'm sure many of them are going to be far better than mine. I also want to give a big shout out about my M course in Power Query in case you would want to learn the M language in a structured way. Try to understand the moving parts of the N, trying to understand how objects are manipulated, how objects are brought together, combined, and trying to solve difficult, nasty problems of data cleansing using the M and you're hitting the barrier with the user interface of Power Query. I will highly recommend that you please join the course. There are about 250 people who have joined the course so far as of this recording please do check out the course the link is in the description thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one bye